I mean, I've been doing this since I was 10. Like, when I was 10, you know what I'm saying, the first group I was ever in, was me and my homie Dinky and his brother D. And it's crazy, because his mama was like our manager. So what happened was, you know, she was like, I'm gonna give y'all a name. All right, mama gave us a name, and it was damn Dinky Five and the Starlight Posse. Yeah, I know, crazy name, but that was the first name that was ever given to me for a group. So from there, I moved on into actually trying to get it for real. When I got to probably like 17, nah, let's say 16, 15, I did a commercial jingle for Revlon. That's when I realized, oh, this, this is debt for real. I can get paid for doing this. You know what I'm saying? That's when I did a commercial jingle, got paid. That's when I said, you know what? It's time to go in a studio, real studio. That's when I actually experienced Pro Tools. And that's when it, it got serious. And that's when I started saying, I'm going to do this full time. And that's when I was in high school saying, you know what? I'm trying to make it through high school just to do this. And that's when I, I got with the, you know, different people behind the scenes. I was doing promotions, radio promotions. Man, I was um, being a hype man. I was um, I was ghostwriting for cats. You know what I'm saying? I did a lot of different things until it actually popped. You know what I'm saying? Like, like right now, the deal I have is with Block Entertainment through Bad Boy South and Warner Music Group. How that happened was I'm in Atlanta doing my thing. Me and my homie Chino Dollar, we put this record together. It's going down. Hit the streets with it hard, man. Picked up a buzz. My homie Carl Mo called me and told me, you know what? I need to hook you with Block. He hit Block, had Block meet me at the Raw Peacock, this very historical and monumental club in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Block come down now, I rock the show. Block like this here, the end of my show. You up next, we do a deal two days later. A week, two later, uh, we can have later, we fly to New York, meet with Diddy and Hall, fly back. That's a solid yet a month later. God willing, God gave us a situation, blessed us with a major label deal through Bad Boy South and Warner Music Group. A multi-million dollar major label deal. Here I am, man, just, you know, four months later. It's been a blessing, it's been a journey, it's my dream, I'm fulfilling that, I'm living it right now, and that's what it is. Man, when I started, man, those cats like Dana Dane, send a fella, Dana Dane. I mean, the way Dana Dane and Slick Rick told stories, it was both of them cats. The way they told stories, it was just like, you could close your eyes, pop in that tape, you hear me, tape. You know what I'm saying? You probably that tape and hit. You can see the picture. That's how well they depicted whatever they talk about, they, they rapped about. Then it was cats like LL Cool J, Run DMC. The first tape I ever purchased in my life, Run DMC tougher than leather. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Me being from Atlanta, it was the whole booty, booty, booty shake movement. You know what I'm saying? You had Uncle Luke. You know what I'm saying? You had, um, DJ Jimmy, you know what I'm saying? You had you had uh 69 boys, Splat Pat, you had eight town players, you had in Atlanta we had King Edward J. You know what I'm saying? Like right now you got a lot of these cats like K Slay, you know what I'm saying? You got Who Kid, DJ Clue, uh drama with Gangsta Grills. But what we knew of in the A Town was King Edward J mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? The Cater Light. That was it. That was like the phenomenon. That was the craze for like what people do now. So those were some of the uh, influences in my life. And once I got a little older, that's when it was cats like um, Outkast, Goody Mob, Pop, B, Jay-Z, Nas, you know what I mean? And that's, you know what I'm saying? That was like some of the major influences in Jock's life to make him say, I can actually stand on my own two feet and make a mark in hip hop history, man. That's what I'm trying to do right now. You know, the perception of mo that most people have, you know what I'm saying, of an artist with a hit record, a hit album, whatever you want to call it, they think it's all fun. They think it's all balling and parlaying and splurging, you know, because when you open up a magazine, it depicts that my lifestyle is just the lifestyle of a baller. Okay, in some, in, in, in some form, uh, you, you turn on a video, you see this depiction of a character who is always got it good, you know what I'm saying? It's just always happy, the eyes, you see the women, the cars, the wheels, the clothes, and all of that. But in all actuality, what they don't see is the, um, the behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? When a cat like myself, like right now, I'm a new artist, you know, to the, to the world. At, and, and I've been doing this for a minute, behind the scenes and getting paid to do it, but to the world, my face and my name and everything, my movement is new, so when they see me, it's like I came out of nowhere. But what they don't understand is like right now, I'm on the, I'm on the tour with T.I., the King Tour, right? And it's crazy because I don't sleep. I ain't been to sleep in four weeks. 
You know what I'm saying? For the simple fact that it's work, 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 work. Even when I'm in the club, that you know, you see me popping them bottles and throwing the money in the air, or whatever, and it seems like it's all fun, but that's work. I'm paid to be here. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy being there, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, I have to be there. That's the difference when someone says, you have to be here from this time to this time in order to get paid. You ride on a tour bus. Even if you ain't doing that, let's say, right now, what am I doing? Here it is, I'm in the city of Chicago. I just did a crazy concert for the radio station with cats like T.I., Paul Wall, Jewel Santana, um, Rick Ross. Crazy concert. After the concert, you know, most of these cats splurge on what I'm doing. I'm right here in the studio doing remixes. I'm in the studio with cats like yourself doing interviews. So it's not all just fun, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a grind to it. And that's what I'm doing right now. Grinding.